Okay, uh, so first exam one is on Wednesday. And the relevant problems are everything up through the vector problems. And so the stuff that we're doing right now, uh, defining position, velocity, and acceleration for vectors uh, is not going to be on the test. Um, so before I go on to new stuff, anybody have any homework questions you want to talk about? What's not? The stuff that we're doing now with position, velocity, and acceleration is not. So the the last stuff that is going to be on the test, it's it's the set of problems called vectors. Yeah, you do that and, uh, right, it's just the stuff called vectors under practice problems, yeah. Yes? Yeah, sure. So 1D particle kinematics. number 12. Um, so there's an elevator and um, oh number 13 maybe okay okay so 13 so they're all rolling up a ramp um, and at one instant, we know that it's rolling up with a speed of three meters per second. And it's going to roll up eventually. It's going to, you know, it's going to slow down, slow down. Eventually, it'll get to its highest point and then start rolling back down. And we're told that it takes um, 2.5 seconds to get from this point where it's going three meters per second to its highest point. And uh, it doesn't say here what it asks for, but um, let's say um, what's the um, distance traveled in that time. Okay, well, the first thing we have to do is choose a zero position, a positive direction, and a time equals zero. Um, I'll choose the zero position to be when we know the the velocity. You know, we, we're given the speed, we're given the direction, so we can turn that into a velocity. Um, and I'm going to call the positive direction that way. And then time equals zero, I'm going to say... That's at that instant. And now we can start to fill out what we know about these variables. Time, acceleration, P0, P at time T, V0, and V at time T. Uh, well, time T is when it reaches the highest point. We're choosing that as our time t because these choices of time equals zero and time t are always based on where you have information and where you're looking for information. So this we know is, is 2.5 seconds. This isn't free fall. Uh, it's not free fall if the thing is touching anything. So we don't know the acceleration yet. Do we know the position at time equals zero? Yeah, so any time that you choose your zero position,
to be the object's position at time equals zero, that's saying that P0 is zero. Um, so it's nope, it's not free fall if it's touching anything. Um, so if it's, if it's touching anything, you know it's not free fall and there's nothing you can do. If it's not touching anything, then even then you have to consider is, is air resistance negligible. In this class, air resistance is pretty much always negligible, but if you're doing a problem in real life, that's what you have to think about. Like, for example, a helicopter isn't touching anything, but it's not in free fall because there's a significant air effect, you know? Um, okay, position at time t, uh, that's what we're trying to find. The velocity at time equals zero, well, we know it has a magnitude of three and it's moving in the positive direction. So this is positive three meters per second. And then do we know the velocity at time t? Yep, that's zero because that's the highest point before it starts to go back the other way. So now we're looking for one of those three constant acceleration equations that has p in it and everything else is known. Um, so let's write these up here. So here are the possibilities. V equals V0 plus AT. P equals P0 plus V0T plus one half AT squared. And 2A times the quantity P minus P0 is equal to V squared minus V0 squared. And let's go through these one at a time and see if we can use any of them to solve for P. Um, well, the first one, right away, you can tell there's no P in it, so you obviously can't use it to solve for P. Um, the second one, there is a P, that's good. We know P0, we know V0, but we don't know A. So we can't solve for P with this one either. There's two variables in that. The third one, this one has to work because the other two didn't, right? Um, no A, there's a P. This one doesn't work either. Okay, so now what? Uh, nothing worked. And so at that point, what you want to do is you're going to have to solve for another variable that's going to hopefully let you solve after that for P. Um, so you solve for usually the candidates for um, these sort of bootstrap variables, like you're going to solve for this variable and then lift yourself up by your own bootstraps, take what you just solved and plug that in, you know. Um, usually the options that you're looking for are either T or A. Well. In this case, T, we already know. So let's try to solve for A. And this time, that first equation is going to work to solve for A. So this equation that says V is equal to V0 plus AT says 0 is equal to positive three plus A times 2.5. And so A is equal to uh, negative six fifths, which is 1.2 meters per second squared, negative. Can we make any sense one way or the other about A being negative? Does that make physical sense with our problem? It's slowing down as it rolls up the hill and our velocity is positive. So we'd expect acceleration to be negative. So that's good. So now we'll try again. Uh, you know, now there's one more thing that we know. Uh, is there an equation that works? And yeah, this time we can use that second equation that says P is equal to P zero plus V zero T plus one half AT squared. 
So P is equal to zero plus three times 2.5 uh, plus one half times negative 1.2 times 2.5 squared. So that's minus 0. 0.6 times 2.5 squared is 6.25. And so you get 7.5 minus uh, 3.75 right wasn't it? I think we've seen this one before. Um, and so the answer is 3.75 meters. Any questions about that one? So yeah, if you, I mean, half of the time you do these, there'll be an equation that'll let you in one step solve for the variable you're looking for. Half the time there won't be. And then the strategy is, is there any way to solve for T or A? And can either of those help you? Um, and in this class, the problems are always big ones. So if you have to look for one of those, it will help me, you know. Um, any other homework problems you want to see? Seven B. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now we're on to vectors. Number seven. And it says, um, consider this vector equation that says P is equal to P0 plus V0 T plus one half A T squared. Um, in there, it actually has Fs on all the things that don't have subscripts. Uh, but this is what it means. It's the equation that we're talking about. It's just instead of calling that final time t, call it t final. Instead of calling position and velocity, the velocities at t, call them the velocity and position at t final. And so that's what those Fs mean. Um, Okay, so let's rewrite this first in the form uh, where we have vector components. So um, you can rewrite this equation as px, py is equal to p0x, p0y. Each of these vectors has components. Um, plus v0x, v0y times t, but the meaning of multiplying a vector times a scalar uh, is that you multiply that scalar to each component. So you can write this as v0x t, v0y t. And then same thing here, uh, one half t squared, those are scalars. So we can write this as one half ax, T squared and one half a y t squared. Um, and now we can break this up into, I guess, maybe the way it's written now. When I read B, I kind of did part of part B in this. I already went. I already used the rules of. Of, of multiplication 
multiplication by um, multiplication by two in order to make every put everything in component form. We don't have multiplication in a, a scale or in a vector left anymore. But I guess we do have to add these up. So what does it mean to like add up vectors? Well, it means that the x component is equal to the sum of the x components, and the y component is equal to the sum of the y components. And so now we can separate this up into two totally independent equations. Um, the first one says px is equal to p0x plus v0xp plus one half ax t squared. And the second one says py is equal to p0y plus v0yt plus one half ay t squared. And so what we're gonna, the way we're gonna use this in two dimensional kinematics of particles is this, what started out as this vector equation, now we can think of as two separate equations. And if you have the variables to use this to solve for what you want, you can use this one. If you have the variables to use this for what you want, you can use this one. They're independent of each other. Any questions about that one? Any other homework questions? Thank you. Okay, so now we're going back. to two-dimensional kinematics of particles. Um, and remember what we learned last time to sort of summarize it is that for the velocity vector, The magnitude is the speed of right vector up here, just to be explicit about that. So the magnitude is the object speed. And the direction of the velocity vector is the object's direction of motion at that instant. And then the acceleration vector does two things. First, there's a part of the acceleration that's parallel to the velocity. And that determines whether the object is speeding up or slowing down. Then there's a part of the acceleration that's perpendicular to the velocity. And that determines which direction, if any, the object is turning. And then the total acceleration is just the sum of these two. Yes, that's right. So you, so you should be doing these homework problems every class and putting them in your binder. And then when, when you turn in your binder, I'll just be looking to make sure you're doing it all. Yes. Um, I'd like it all in one section, all the homework together. It's just easier for me to grade that way. Okay, so using this information, I'm gonna go through an example. Okay. 
Um, so let's say that we know the velocity vector as a function of time is equal to t for the x component and 2t squared for the y component. And let's say that when time is equal to zero, the position vector is 4, 2. Okay. So you can think of what this means is at any time this represents the velocity vector of the object. And when time is equal to zero, these are the coordinates of the object. Um, and here's what we want to do. So first we want to calculate the position as a function of time and the acceleration as a function of time. And then second, We want to calculate the velocity vector and acceleration vector at time equals one second. And we want to use those uh, to figure out what can we say about the motion and um, so here are the kind of things that uh, like for example which way is it moving is it speeding up or slowing down Is it turning? Okay. Okay, well, um, we have the velocity vector. What do we have to do from this velocity? So this is a vector function. Um, to go from velocity vector as a function of time, how do we get to acceleration as a function of time? Yeah, so it's a time derivative. Um, and, right, time derivative. So acceleration as a function of time is the time derivative of the velocity vector as a function of time. And so to do that, we just take the derivatives of each component. What's dt dt? So if you're taking the derivative of t with respect to time, it's just one. If you're taking the derivative with respect to time of 2t squared, that's 4t. That was just derivative, so there's no constants of integration. So this is the answer to the acceleration as a function of time. Okay, that one was a little easier than going the, the direction of integration. What about the position? So that one we have to integrate. With respect to time. Um, so if we integrate t with respect to time, uh, we get one half t squared. And then you also have the constant of integration, so I'll call this t1. And for the y component, we'll integrate this. Um, and so you get two thirds t cubed.
plus a constant of integration that doesn't have anything to do with that one. So we'll call it C2. But we're not done yet because of these constants of integration. So now we have to use the boundary conditions that are given to figure out what those constants are. So the boundary conditions now, um, we're given that when time is equal to zero, the X component of the position is four. So one half times zero squared plus C one is equal to four. And in other words, C one is equal to four. So the X component of the position as a function of time is one half T squared plus four. Any questions about that? Um, what this says is when time is equal to zero, T X is equal to four. So we'll set, we'll put zero in place of T in the equation and put four in place of P. You know, so this equation says T X is equal to one half T squared plus T one. So set T equal to zero and set TX equal to four. And now we'll do it for the Y equation. Uh, the Y equation says set P equal to zero, set PY equal to two. So two thirds of zero cubed plus C2 is equal to two. And so C2 is equal to two. And so PY as a function of time is two thirds P cubed plus two. And so if you put these two together, you get that the position vector as a function of time has Px as an x component. So one half t squared plus four and py as a y component, two thirds t cubed plus two So now we have functions that represent the position vector, velocity vector, and acceleration vector as functions of time. Um, and now for part B, we want to know, and this is just totally arbitrary. I mean, this I could have asked for any time value, and we could have plugged it in and gotten the position, velocity, and acceleration. But I asked for position, velocity, and acceleration when time is equal to one second, okay? So what do we get for these? Well, the position vector is one half times one squared plus four. So that's one half plus four, so 4.5. Plug in one in uh, the Y component you get two thirds times one plus two. So that's 2.6 repeating. So what that means is at that instant, the object is you know, whatever, you plot that point. That's the location of the object. At 
time equals one second. Uh, now the velocity at time equal one. Question? Yeah. From the variable? Yeah. Oh, instead of t squared over 2? Yeah. It's fine. It's the same thing. doesn't matter. OK, so now let's plug one second in for our velocity function. That, that was what was given in the problem. Plug in one second for the x component, you get 1. Plug in one second for the y component, you get 2. So the velocity is 1. Two, right? Yeah. By the way, this one would have units of, I don't know if I gave any units, but it has to have units of length. In most cases in this class, that would be meters. This would be units of meters per second or some kind of length per time. Um, Okay, so what does this mean? Well, this velocity, if you put the tail of this vector at the origin, you can plot this. Um, it says you go over two, up one, and that's the head of the vector if its tail is at the origin. So this is the direction that the object is moving. Well, and the magnitude gives you the speed, okay? Over, yeah, it sure would. Over one, up two. Okay, so in other words, how that relates to the origin doesn't matter, but that is the direction that is moving at that instant, and the magnitude is the speed at that instant. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. So then could you say that you Yeah, that would be a pretty, yes. And actually, if you did that, um, so if you put the velocity vector here, and then you drew the rest of the path through that point, you would see that that velocity vector would tangent to the point. And then the acceleration vector. at time equals one second. Um, there's no t in the x, um, so that just stays one. Plug in one for t here, and you get a vector one four for the acceleration. Get a sense of the direction here. We'll go over one, up four. So it's steeper than the velocity vector. And now what can we say about um, so what can we say about the direction it's moving, whether it's speeding up or slowing down, um, and what whether it's turning, and if it is, which way is it turning? Okay. Well, the velocity vector is this way, right? So that's the direction it's going. The acceleration vector is this way, okay, so um, this is the velocity vector, this is the acceleration vector, that's what we figured out, okay. 
And to figure out whether it's speeding up or slowing down and which way it's turning, we're gonna break up that acceleration into two components, okay? One that's parallel to the velocity vector. And one that's perpendicular to the velocity vector. These are 90 degrees from each other. Okay. So based on that, is A parallel in the same direction of the velocity or the opposite direction? Same, so is it speeding up or slowing down? Speeding up. And then A parallel is that way, which means that it's turning that way, not that way. Okay. Um, like you can think of it like when you're driving, if this particle was driving in the plane, it would be turning the steering wheel to go that way, not the opposite, you know? Um, and so uh, this is the direction. It's speeding up. and it's turning that way. Any questions about that? Um, the most important type of accelerations that we're gonna deal with in two dimensions, um, is constant acceleration. So constant acceleration in 2D. And in a lot of ways, it's very similar to constant acceleration in 1D. Um, so what this means is that acceleration is a function of time. is just equal to AX, AY, and those two things are constants. So now from this, let's derive an expression for the velocity as a function of time. Um, given that at time equals zero, the velocity is equal to V zero. Okay, where these are, again, these are just numbers, constants. Well, to do that, you have to integrate, right? The velocity vector is the integral of the acceleration vector with respect to time. <clears throat> so what do you get if you integrate a constant with respect to time? You get AXT. Um, plus some constant C1, and you get AYT plus some constant C2. And now to find C1 and C2, we'll use those boundary conditions. So the boundary condition for the X component says if you plug zero is equal to this function, the x component of v is v0x. So v0x is equal to this number ax times zero plus c1. 
And so C1 is equal to C0x. And in other words, Vx is a function of time then is AXT plus V0x. Um, usually you see it written in the other order, V0x plus AXT. And you probably recognize the form of that equation. Um, and then the boundary condition for y works the same way. V0y is equal to Ay times 0 plus C2. So C2 is equal to V0y. And so Vy is a function of time comes out the same way, V is equal to V0Y plus AY times T. And what these tell you together is that the velocity vector as a function of time is equal to the V0 vector plus the A vector times t. And now you can integrate that to come up with the position vector. Um, let's see. So now we want to derive position vector is a function of time, given that when time is equal to zero, the position is p0x, p0y. And it works out similarly. Um, I won't go through all the steps, but um, there's a homework assignment a problem where you're supposed to do this. Um, so what you get is that position vector as a function of time is equal to P0 vector plus V0 vector times T plus one half times the acceleration vector times T squared. And now if you combine the function for Vy and the function for uh, the function for V and the function for P, you can come up with that third pair of equations that looks like our third constant acceleration equation in 1D. Okay, and we can think of this as giving us six independent equations. Um, so I'm gonna skip that last set of equations but we get six independent equations. For constant acceleration in 2D. And those are, um, Vx is equal to V0x plus Axt. And then the y version of that one, Vy, is equal to V0y plus Ayt. <clears throat> and now we'll go on to the two position equations. The first one says Px is equal to P0x plus V0xT plus one half AX T squared. 
And the second one says PY is equal to P0Y plus V0YT plus one half AY T squared. And then the third pair of equations says 2AX times the quantity PX minus P0X is equal to VX squared minus V0X squared. And its companion, the uh, Y component equation says 2AY times the quantity PY minus P0Y is equal to VY squared minus V0Y squared. Okay, well, to solve problems with these, um, now there's a whole bunch more variables you have to keep track of. Before there was just P, A, uh, P0, P, V0, V. Now for all of those except time, there's two components, right? So the possible variables that you're dealing with are now t, ax and ay, uh, p0x and p0y, px and py, v0x and v0y, and vx and dy. So we went from dealing with six total variables to, I think there's 11 here now. Any questions about that? So next time I'll start with just, I'll give you a set of steps to, that'll always work with this. If you want to follow it, you don't have to, but if, if it helps. And uh, I'll just do some example problems.